Hi, Jim Graydon here, focusing on combat sequences. And these combat sequences were taught to me by the legendary Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis is considered the founding father of American kickboxing and is considered one of the greatest American martial artists of the 20th century. I was very fortunate I trained directly under Joe Lewis for 20 years, and I definitely credit him with making me a world champion. Now, what I love about my training with Mr. Lewis was they always focused on strategy and you know getting more mental about the training and focusing on developing different approaches to fighters instead of just getting out there and fighting. And what they created were these combat sequences. And the one we're going to work on today is called the 38. Now, why is it called the 38? Well, each one of the combat sequences has a theme. The 38 is much of a pressure fighter. And if you were in the ring and I said 38, I basically am telling you to work the body. Now, why is it named after the pistol 38? Because Mr. Lewis wanted you to hit the body and you feel you know, some penetration and when you hit, but it feels like uh, big holes coming out of your back. In other words, just like a 38 brings a small hole going in, big hole going out. You want a penetrating body shot when you work the 38. Now, in all these combat sequences, we're gonna be working in modules. In other words, this is a long pattern. You would not utilize the entire pattern in a bout or a fight. You would break it up into small, what we call modules. All right, now, you're gonna be training at home with me. At least I sure hope you are. And if you're watching this on video, I want you to follow along. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this 38 in a southpaw position. I'll have the right leg in front so you can be in what we call orthodox position with your left leg in front. Again, if you're right-handed, I highly recommend you develop your fighting skills with your left leg in front. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and get started, getting a good guarding stance. Now, very first part of the module, we're gonna step in and fire a jab. We call it a stabilizing technique. We're trying to freeze the target. From here, we're gonna slip, making our opponent miss. Then we're coming back up again, slipping again. Now, as we slip to the right, we wanna make sure that we stay down. If you notice, my chin is down, my weight is slightly shift back, so I can then go with a wide body shot, trying to go around that elbow and hit that rib cage, and then a short hook coming right into the liver, little liver shot. Now from here, I'm gonna give a fake. I'm gonna make my opponent think of coming back with that right hand, boom, as I come back with the hook punch. And from there, of course, I never have my students just stop. We always kind of stay in the moment, we we'll call shadow fighting. In other words, you're learning this with me in front of this uh, uh, TV set. From there, you should take this to the mirror and then later take it to the heavy bag. And I'm gonna show you how to do that, as well as to the mitts, and then actually applying these theories to sparring. So let's go over again the first module of the 38. Again, stabilize the target with the jab. Hand comes right back to the cheekbone. Chin down. Again, slipping to your left. Avoiding that jab. You notice when I slip, I shift that weight forward. I come back. Slip to the right. Weight slip, step, uh, slip slightly backwards. My heel's down. About probably, I'd say 55% of my weight on my back leg, 45 on front. So I can cover some distance coming around the elbow, creating power by shifting that weight forward. Then coming back with a short 45 degree angle liver shot. So again, if we look at these two punches, one's wide, going around the rib, or going around the elbow to get to the rib, and then your opponent, if you go wide, what's your opponent gonna think the other punch is gonna go? It's also gonna go wide. So I love about this, game, this combat sequence, has a little deception in it, because we go wide and then we go short. And again, that short punch, don't pull the hand back. You pull the hand back, you're adding a gap in time for you to get hit. You've got to be able to learn to create power from your chin bone or cheekbone straight to the target, utilizing your body to create power. And here, again, weight's forward. That weight is gonna come back. And again, we wanna move the body first and boom, then release right at the end. And if you notice, that hand did not come back at all. It goes straight to the target as my weight goes forward or comes back again. Now, I'm going to push this right shoulder forward, making my opponent think that I'm throwing that right hand. Well, he's going to force block that right hand, bam, and hopefully run right back into that hook punch. So let's go over that module again. Again, here we go. Jab, slip, slip, stay down, wide, short, come back, hook. Again, jab, slip, slip, body, body, hook. Back outside, don't disengage, keep fighting, come on, jab, slip, slip. Body, body, hook, back outside. All right, let's move into the second module of the 38. 
All right, here we go. We're back to our guarding stance. Now remember, the first module ended with us throwing a left hook. So we start the second module avoiding a right hand. Usually it's going to be more of a looping right hand. We're going to do this with the weave. Now, since we're going to lead right off with the weave, you've got to be aware. You can't just cut straight across and then come under on your weave. You have to be aware that you're coming off a hook or that punch is coming in this direction. You need to go slightly away from that right hand and under. Now, I'm going to keep eye contact with you throughout this video. So I keep my chin down, I use my peripherals to do so because I want to keep my forehead towards my opponent because that's what I, if I'm going to get hit, that's where I want to get hit. If my chin is up, I'm exposing all my target areas. You know, one of my favorite sayings to my students is the only time your chin is up when someone has a camera. Well, I have a camera and I'm still keeping my chin down. So, you know, you want that chin down for this entire sequence. So you're here, down, under, and now look all that weight forward, cuts back all that power on that hook punch, comes back with that straight right hand, and now from here, we're gonna try to avoid going straight back. We're gonna pull off to the right, jabbing out, and now from here, we're gonna finish with the kick. Now, I'm gonna throw a round kick, but I really don't care what kick you finish with. The idea is that we're coming in, again, pressure with the 38, coming back with the hook, coming back with the cross, changing the angle so we're not going straight out, and then coming back and finishing with that kick. Now from there, I'm coming back, getting back in position, getting my feet right and going right back to the combination again. I'm not in disengaging because I threw a kick, and I can't emphasize enough. If you're gonna train with me, that your mind is always in the fight. So we weave under. Hook, weight shifts back. Cross, weight shifts forward. Now, a lot of people say we'll never move straight back. I'm not an advocate of never do, never straight back. I'm an advocate of never going the same direction always. So if I go straight back, that's okay. But next time I need to go to the left, or next time I need to go to the right, we need to be unpredictable. And that's why in these combat sequences that we always have a tendency to pull one direction to get us in the habit of not always going straight back. But remember, it's just one of those things where you don't want to always do anything. So, again, weave it under, weight shifts. I can't emphasize this enough, that we focus on the weight shifting. Forward, back, forward. It's called a clearing jab. And for those of you who don't know what a clearing jab is, it's basically saying, hey, stay here. Because if I just go backwards, my opponent can follow me. I can jab as I move back, basically keeping him honest. And then from there, he thinks I'm disengaging, and then I finish off, bang, with that kick. Now, I like to cover my kicks. If you notice, I threw that kick, and before that foot hit the ground, I threw a jab. Why? Because you get hit during gaps. And once a kick has made contact, as it drops, that's a gap. That's a gap that can be used against you. It's not hard to fill that gap with a jab. That way, if your opponent's rides your kick and comes straight in, He's having to deal with something. So don't, as many people do, disengage mentally once that kick locks. Then they lazily put the foot down. They lazily kind of get back to position. Stay in the fight. In other words, you get in front of the mirror. And you're going to learn this with me, but you then should go to a mirror. Work on doing it exactly like I taught you. But shadow fight. On those toes, weaving under, hook, cross, jab out, kick. Get it back, move, switch your feet, come back, do it again. Pow, pow, jab out, kick, boom, jab out, move, switch your feet, come back, do it again. Over and over and over. Because when I teach these sequences, I utilize them pretty much four ways. We put them in front of the mirror. So the first thing you should do is get in front of the mirror once you get this combination down and work on doing it properly. And coming back to this tape and referencing it. Then go into a heavy bag. Heavy bag's more for conditioning and power. Work on that weight shifting, really torquing on those punches. And then, mitt work. It's a whole video unto itself, we'll go over that later. And then, if you have the desire, sparring or competing, where you take the 38, and in the corner, if I go work the body, well, your opponent hears that. I go, you know, 38, he doesn't know what a 38 is, but do you know work the body pressure? So that's the whole concept behind the combat sequences. Okay. 
All right, let's go ahead and move to the heavy bag. Now, as I talked earlier, when it comes to developing fighting skills, there's really four ways I like to train. One, again, is in front of the mirror. And when I'm in front of the mirror, as I call shadow fighting, I'm working on really improving my skills. I'm looking at my whole body. I'm looking at my defensive posture. I'm making sure I'm doing the techniques properly. Then I move to the heavy bag. Heavy bag helps create power. Also, if you have a moving heavy bag, which I highly recommend if you're learning to, if you're trying to you know, transfer these techniques into sparring. And then mitt work, having a good trainer or somebody that can hold mitts to help improve your focus. And then sparring. I'm sorry, you know, learning how to defend yourself is hard to do if you, you know, if the only time you ever spar is in prearranged sequences. So you need to have something that's free flowing. Now some of us, because of physical limitations, make it so we can only do three elements, and that's okay. Now, I'm not talking about conditioning. Of course, if you're running or doing other things, that's fine. I'm talking about developing your fighting skills. So let's talk about the bag work here. Now, I got a moving bag. Let's do the first sequence. First sweet sequence, and remember, is a jab, slip, slip. I go wide to the body, then short. Again, I'm really emphasizing on the bag here, almost going around it. And then really working on making sure if you look at this punch, that it's short. I'm just short shot. I'm trying to create power. And again, you could stand in front of a bag for a solid two or three minutes and just work this. When I was fighting, I'd get a sore elbow, a tennis elbow, from just throwing a million hooks. Because if you're just going bang, bang over and over again, you're never going to get better at it. You want to focus on that short weight forward from your chin to that rib. And that weight transference and that nice sharp shot, boom, again, it's a 38. Should be, each should feel that body shot. And then when I come back with that right hand, I want him to bite on it, but I don't throw it. And I come back with that hook punch. So again, jab, slip, slip. One, two, three. Back, back, outside. So if you notice, I don't freeze. I throw a couple jabs at the end there because I'm not going to just go, okay, I'm working the first module of 38. All right, now I'm going to fight the bag with the first module of the 38. That means because it's moving, it might pause me on a punch or kick or two. You know, I might have to do an extra jab. I might throw an extra body shot just because of where the bag is. There's no law when it comes to sparring, but the idea is we work the first sequence. Jab, slip, slip. Body, body, hook. Yeah, slip, slip. Body, body, hook. And again, I don't like to ever reach out and stop the bag. I've never seen an opponent yet let me reach out and hold them. So if your bag moves too much, starts moving, get in there and use your shoulder, use your jab. Your opponent's going to move. Deal with it. Adjust to it. That's why you move to a moving heavy bag. All right, now let's talk about the second module. I'm coming in, weaving under, snaking in, as I say. I'm never just moving my head at the end of a guy's punches, thinking that I'm Muhammad Ali and slick and moving. Because I might make a miss once or twice, but sooner or later, he's gonna catch me. I like one definitive movement. Right hand's coming, boom, I'm coming in. So I'm coming in underneath that right cross. Under, inside the elbow, make him pay. Change the angle out. Kick. Back engaging. Now again, I got a moving heavy bag. So I might jab to stop it. Then back in. Again, with a full banana bag, I can work high kick or I can work low kick. Highly recommend you change it up. Again, weave it under. Hook cross. Jab out. Kick. And then if you want to put the whole thing together, a little harder to do. Bag's not going to cooperate with you. But that's okay. Make adjustments. I prefer to work the heavy bag with modules. The shorter sequences. Just like I would if I was sparring. But every once in a while, I'll just do the whole thing. Yeah, slip, slip. Body, body, hook, weave on. Hook, claw, chain down. And back. And again, maybe jab. I'm trying to stabilize the target. Stabilize the back. And back. And again, the bag is your friend. It creates power and will get your butt in shape.